Uh, the bass note of the vocal is my favorite thing ever. I think it's a low D. It's, it's basically like the lowest note Howard can sing. So happy this is going on the stream. <laughs> we are going to do a breakdown today of Never Enough. We released an EP a couple of months ago. Lead track was called Never Enough. So here we have it. Similar template to well, everything I do. A couple other like little features that you might not recognize, um, especially this down here. This is actually the finished song, um, which I sort of played out of my SSL. But yeah, this is what you need to see mainly. We got drums, not loads going on with the drums, like not, not really anything that you've not seen before to be honest. Pretty much my go-to sounds. Um, big kick on the kick. Um, recorded in some claps. There is a break that's sort of leading the way on most of it. I think the break came first and then I've messed around with it and reversed some bits and then I've sort of merged it all together. A couple of vocal sample stabs, um, some sweeps, LFOs, a couple of tambourines and so on. So we'll come back to that. The vocal bus is where the magic is. That is where we got a lot of stuff going on. We've got Howard which is kind of all of this stuff. The vocal was was pretty much Howard um, sending me stuff remotely. Um, I think he actually recorded them in here in my house while I was in Miami. So then I've sort of gone through them and organized them, probably given them a little bit of tune here and there. Oh, in fact, I gave them a load of pitch correction because we wanted it to sound like a robot. Um, so we'll get into that. But the coolest part about the whole project is this stuff down here, which is um, gospel choir. So we've got gospel choir on this song. You've got synth bus, which is pretty busy as well. A lot of outboard gear, hardware, I mean, on this tune. You've got, yeah, look, I mean, you've only got a couple of MIDI instruments. The rest is all all hardware. I should say I, I, I began this beat without Howard. I actually began the beat with my good friend Andy, a.k.a. Luxury. And we were writing in Essex. I think we did a couple of streams from there. You guys probably remember. And yeah, during that period is where we sort of started the basis for this whole EP. Yeah, any sort of hardware synths that you see in this project, like these beeps, Beeps insane. <laughs> Beeps insane. I think we all know which bit that is. Yeah, the bass as well. Substantial bass. That is all Andy playing in stuff on a synth, like my Andromeda or pro oh, the Juno. The Juno is all over this tune. Um, Juno 106. And me messing with them as he played. And we just got a take of, you know, loads of loads of stuff. And then I've kind of gone through it and all and selected bits that I like. Like if I pull out any, yeah. There's like lots of hidden audio in here of, of stuff that we recorded and bounced out or went through carefully and chose. So yeah, it's a very hardware based track, which is um, not the norm for disclosure stuff or di disclosure stuff of old, I should say, but it is much more common these days. I do like to kind of get a vibe going in the room, whether it's with my Roland Boutique stuff or The Peak or yeah, Andromeda, Juno, The Moog. And when you got someone like Andy in the room, who's a sick keyboard player and he's really good at extracting weird sounds out of my own sim that I don't even know how to use. <laughs> um, he's like, he's the guy. So you just hit record. That's why, you know, that, that's probably why the whole tune started with a break, to be honest, because I would have just thrown in a, a drum loop, you know, something I've been saving for a while, uh, this thing, and we would have just jammed around it for ages. So the stuff you see remaining in this window is 10 seconds of like a half an hour mess around on one synth. All right, cool. Let us begin with the drums so here's a little blast of just the drums starting with the kick so you can see like the whole thing's built around this break here that's like pretty much the first thing i threw in to the session kind of does the same thing for a few little fills here and there That's, that's the main vibe. So I'm going to turn all the plugins off the drum bus. So here's actually how the break started. I, I think I have already processed that a bit. Like, I think there is another... Yeah, I deleted the track. There, there's a much more, like, full-on version of the break with, like... And um, this file here is... a a bounce down that I've done of that that's already chopped. Um, so it used to look like many regions and now it's just this one region. So first thing I'm doing is overdrive. And then I'm doing transient master, taking off some sustain. And another one, which is making it really snappy, like if I bypass. And put them in. Just tightening it up loads. That's all going through this EQ which is pretty crazy. Boosting some like mids 
and some super highs, taking out some resonance here, scooping out the low, like low, low mids, high lows. I don't know, low mids. And that's the end result. So without quite like boxy sounding, you know, not very clear. Yeah, like this resonance here. No one needs that. That's all that tinnitus area. And you can see here I'm doing some um, automation with those transient masters. And that's what's really helped building it up. So I'm actually boosting the sustain by 32. And at the moment it's on like minus 100. So you'll hear the difference. Um, I just find this like a really useful technique for just really like pushing energy and put, build, like building up, you know, the energy because it just makes all of like the space in the sample come back. Yeah, you get the vibe. It's like just sort of building up, building up, and then it cuts out all of the all the crap. Um, I've put a limiter on there too, which. Yeah, there's just that one snare every first time that was just had a horrible transient on it. So I just took out that little pop. See those red lines? It literally only does it on the first snare. And I was like, why is the first snare not matching the others? So I just chopped it. So that's the break. Um, that's like really yeah, where, the, where everything began. I've layered some claps over that. I honestly like couldn't tell you if that was hand clap studio or real claps, but either way, they've been bounced down into this one file of just sort of panned claps. Bit of overdrive, bit of EQ. That is usually how I EQ hand clap studio, to be honest. I take out some of the super highs, boost the mids. So it's it's probably probably hand clap studio by Robotic Bean, which is a sweet plugin. The kick and the weight underneath it. So you can see I've got some automation on the release. Really short, like 40 millisecond kick, and then and then it suddenly like opens up and boom, boom, boom. You know. So it's still punchy. It's not really like a subby kick. It's like nothing you'd you'd never use that in like a hip hop tune or something with boom, boom. You know, it's a very like I like my kicks very short and punchy because it leaves room for loads of sub and my god is there a lot of sub in this tune so it really it really didn't need a very like big kick although the name is uh deceptive it's like 120 milliseconds of kick which is like boom boom you know it's not boo, 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 like you get an edm you know where it's just a massive kick the whole time like that is fun but i just need a little pop um there's also like a kind of acoustic kick over the top that's providing, you know, the clicky details. So if I just... So yeah, two kicks in this song. Big kick doing the thump. And then this one over the top. And and they're literally like a match of each other. They're, they're literally just copy and pasted the MIDI. So yeah, you put that together with the break and you get this. That's that. Moving on, we've got battery here. What's battery doing? It's probably 909 stuff. Loads. Oh my God, I went so in on this 909. The most time I've ever spent on a 909 hi-hat was in this tune. Like, there is not a note in this song that I didn't choose myself, the length. Like, there is not a single note that's the same length. And it's because I wanted it all to be, just sound like it was jammed. Like, there's literally no pattern to it. Every single... One is long and then there's some triplets and the velocity is doing like the uh, volume. The length of the note is the length of like, you know, and a lot of that's played in, but a lot of it is <laughs> drawn in as well. And it's honestly throughout the whole song, like there's not a single loop in this tune. So I'm, I'm pretty like that overlapping just goes over the entire bar. Um, and that was because I really wanted it to sound like a live. I wanted the whole like 909 to just sound thumping and like it was just being messed with and I kind of was messing with it the whole way through, you know? Played it in straight and then really brought it to live afterwards. Even these like, these claps, uh, what do you call it, a rim? It's just one rim in Never Enough um, and it's pretty, it's a pretty thumping rim. So here's what battery's doing. Oh, there is a little, is there a little clap there I heard? Yeah, 
So there's another like 909 clap, which is doing some of the more like spacious reverby stuff. Um, I actually used Chroma Verb for this um, by Logic, which has one of the best like visualizers for a reverb I've ever seen. Like, check this thing out. How cool is that? Oh, and if you press freeze, I think it pretty much just goes. Look at that. All right, so that's what battery's doing. There it is with the brake. And with the kicks. I added in a couple of like vocal shouts, um, splice, splice samples, like these sort of hip hop acapella things. Uh, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Like, really subtle. So they just sort of give the drums a bit of a human touch, you know? that little yeah 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 yeah. Um, i think i've used those samples before in a stream yeah they're like my go-to kind of just need like a person in the drums you know just making it sound a bit more human um you got some sweeps here uh i don't know what the lfo is might be me like with the monotry but it's probably a sample I honestly don't remember what that is. It may have been me and Andy messing with an LFO on a synth, or it might be a sample. From the length of it, I'm going to guess it was me, because I don't don't usually download massive long build-ups like that, but it might be. This is definitely uh, just a splice, like white noise. Psh, I use it all the time. It's literally just... Psh. So that, yeah, that's a useful little impact tool. There's no like symbols or anything, I don't think, on this song. Oh, maybe there is. There's a lot more battery stuff going on here. Yeah, the, the, the psh is the symbol, really. Yeah, there's like a, a ride symbol that comes in. Yeah, man, there, there's just stuff going on the whole time in this tune, like whether it's an effect on the drum bus itself. Like, see all this? I got, I've just done like so much editing everywhere. <laughs> like filters on the breakdown. reverb and stuff but there's just little moments throughout the whole thing like even the um the reverb on the clap that's a really interesting one so just that that single 909 clap you hear in every now and again the reverb on that i'm like i think i'm eqing it or something like is that inside the reverb damping eq yeah so it, that's why you, i chose the logic reverb because you, you've got this really nice like um eq inside it that's much more detailed than you get on like a valhalla eq or like a you know an old vintage model of a reverb so you know you might not like the sound as much but like you cannot do this with valhalla it's just not possible here moving So yeah, it's kind of like a filter reverb thing. And you can see I just pretty much drag and clicked that with the mouse. And that is happening under the drums. You probably don't even notice it when you listen to it as a standout part, but like it is happening. Yeah, so another little detail. Also with the 909 hat. I've got some stuff going on here as well. I've got a ring shifter on there, which is like a logic uh, frequency modulator. Um, that's doing some build-ups just on a hi-hat, um, which I don't usually go to this level of detail, but... Hear that? And I've got a delay on there as well. Timeless 2 by FabFilter. That's just down here, see? Just literally doing some delay build-up. So there's like... Lots of different things all doing their own style of build up at the same time to equate to like a riser, basically. So instead of just like, you know, dragging in a riser from Splice, um, which I've done as well, but like on top of that, you know, there's a ring shifter building up, a reverb building up, a filtered reverb on the clap. 
two tambourines that sort of randomly come in before the beat for no reason. And it all just sort of adds up to create these really weird moments where you think the music's going to come in and it just doesn't. And I was really consciously thinking of about the, the phrase of never enough and trying to get that feeling in of like, oh, it's not quite there. Like, where's the drop? Like, nothing drops on beat one in this song. Nothing comes in where you expect it. It's just not quite, like, it never sits easy. It never just goes one, two, three, four, bang. It's always messing around with you. And that was, I was really sort of trying to take the meaning of Howard's tune into that. Because when I first did these drums, it was all very much just four to the floor. And then the never enough stuff went in. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I'm going to do the most drum fills and the most takeaways and kind of trolling the listener that I can do to give it that feeling of uh, wanting more. The lyric is, it's never enough. I always leave wanting more. So to try and get that into the music was quite important to me. Uh, where's it drop to that? Just to give you a sense of the what I'm talking about. Here you go. Two, three, four. You know, that's just one example. It does this over and over again. One, two, three. Doom, 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 doom. And like, not a single one is the same. I made sure like every single one is different. Anything else interesting in the drums? Bzz, bzz, bzz. I don't think so. A couple tambourines. They are bloody good tambourines. Um, I recorded these myself. I think they're the same tambourine, but I just recorded them at different speeds. So I used like the vary speed feature here. So I recorded one at like and another one at and so when you speed that up, it kind of like, you know, they match up. It's a very like common tambourine trick to do. No, I don't know, actually, maybe they're different. I, I remember playing, I, I went to Guitar Center in Miami and I bought a couple of tiny tambourines, so. Yeah, really tight, really swung. Um, yeah, little stops again like that, just little, just little moments to make it a bit special. Got some transient masters on there, which are also tightening them up if I take those off. Yeah, very rattly. Shh. I personally like it. Um, all right, I'll try and play all the drums together, but it's yeah, it's been a bit of a, it's been a bit difficult. Yeah, there's some of the, the automation. So all the drums go through the drum bus and they go through compression, tape, saturation, EQ and a limiter. And then they get sent from bus 10 to bus 15, which is this bus, which I'm just kind of using as an effects bus. So this has got another EQ on it, but it, I'm just using it as a filter. Like it's not actually like boosting or subtracting anything. It's just doing a filter and a reverb. So the whole drum kit's going through a reverb unit and an EQ, which I'm using like you would use on a DJ FX mixer. You know, you would build the reverb up, take out the bass, whatever. I'm just using my DJ brain for these drums, basically, and filtering them around and messing around with them. Got a nice bit of pre-delay on there, which is going like instead of going like see and I think it changes yeah you hear that it's getting like faster and faster yeah I was just I was really trying to find different ways to make a build up feel build up -y without just sticking a big boo on there or you know the obvious ways of doing it using things like reverb and space and eq and filters you know simple stuff but that i would you know stuff that you try and kind of do when you're djing i was like i'll just put that in the track so it's done <laughs> and it does what i want it to do okay um that is drums done moving on to the vocals it's never enough there never will be too much you never be yeah this tremolo plugin is going to keep coming in maybe if i do it's never enough, there never will be too much you Never enough, it's never enough I always leave wanting more Never enough, it's never enough Oh damn it, we missed the harm <laughs> CPU, crazy on these vocals I always leave wanting more Never Ooh, baby Wanting more. Yeah, 
yeah, big harm. Big harmony from Howard and the gospel choir there. All right, so starting from the top, we've got the lead vocal here. Uh, I think all of these are Howard. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Yeah, so you can hear it's really robot. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Never enough, it's never enough. So that's the first harmony on Howard's vocal. I think he recorded it here, not through this mic, probably through the Neumann over there, but I wasn't even there. So uh, this is how it sounded raw. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Never enough, it's never enough, I always leave wanting more. There is a soothe on here. If I, if I take it off though, it's going to stop being out of time so we'll persist so yeah first up um compression going through this waves waves <laughs> waves 1176 it's never enough there never will be too much you then we're going through fucking logic pitch correction which howard chose so what we got all the black notes and f selected what's that f major f sharp major it's never enough there never will be too so i think he really wanted that da -da 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 -da, that little skip to make it sound extra robot. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. And it just sounds weird there. And I'm automating the release time, uh, attack time, so that it lets some vibrato through. Because before, I had to do it on all of them. See, all, all these purple lines here are all me increasing the attack so that he can go, because otherwise it would go, and it just sounded terrible. So, yeah, that was annoying. It's never too much you pretty mad you know we don't usually do effects as bold as that but he was really going for this like todd edwards you know choppy sample kind of vibe and singing through tremolo um when it's that da, 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 just sort of cleaned it right up and made it sound like an old sample that had been chopped up so shouts to howard on thinking of singing recording through tremolo live um, I ended up automating it and changing it a bit and making it clean, but he sent it to me with tremolo on the master out, and I was like, what the hell? This sounds like Todd Edwards. How did you do that? <laughs> it's never enough, there never will be too much you. You can hear on the much, it sort of disappears and then stays, you know, you can see here this bypass at the top, these ones here. That's all this plugin being bypassed. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. And we have another tremolo doing the do, 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 do. so it's like the battle of the tremolos you got the logic one you got sound toys one this one's doing eighth notes do, 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 do. and this one's doing swung 16ths the reason i use the sound toys one is because it has swing so instead of going do, 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 it's going do, 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 do. and this is a great tremolo for that so you'll see uh, this coming in and out it's never you. Very bold effect, but for a club track, I just felt like it needed messing up in some crazy way. So um, that's the main sound you're getting with it. I'll come back to this bus here with all of that. Let's go through the individual sounds. So you've heard the lead. Yeah, they've all got the same plugins going on. Bit of overdrive, bit of EQ. Yeah, taking out some like crazy resonance. Um, gem dopamine, which is like boosting the highs. Need to update that. There's a lot of Ozone 9 Imager going on too. So I'm just trying to widen out some of this. I don't I don't know if that even is even doing anything, to be honest. It must be. It is a mono track, but... It's never enough. Oh, yeah, it widens it right out. I think what's happening, right, is because it's a mono um, signal, but pitch the pitch correction plugin is in stereo, and it does kind of add some, like, weird stuff in the sides, which I liked, and I was like, I want to push the sides a lot so that each vocal sounds like it's kind of in a weird bathroom box thing it's never enough there never will be too much you straight down the middle it's never enough there never will be too much you yeah so don't usually put a widener on a mono vocal but felt right um and yeah we got one pan left one pan right it's never enough, there never will be too much you. Such a weird sound with that pitch correction. Like he was trying to sing like a robot. Uh, first harmony. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. High one. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Really pitch correcty and weird. Like stuff it's we never we never usually do that, <laughs> you know? It's never enough, there never will be too much you. 
but it just totally felt right for this tune. That kind of getting that vocodery talk box almost sound. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Really happy harmony. It's never enough, there never will be too much you. Like, I know that sounds weird. That does not sound natural, and that's good. That's what we wanted. Always leave wanting more. Never I just love that cheeky. Such a weird harmony. And you got some extra harmonies down here. Leave one to more. Very sick. So auto tuned. You can really hear there's no more. It's just more immediate. But that's what Howard wanted. Sound like Todd Edwards. Uh, the bass note of the vocal is my favorite thing ever. I think it's a low. D. It's, it's basically like the lowest note how it can sing. Um, oh, I'm so happy this is going on the stream. More. <laughs> let's give him. Let's give this man some treble. More. 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 That's pretty damn low. Um, I've got a lower voice than Howard, so. I can hit that not too hard, but he was, I think he really pushed for that one. It just adds so much weight when all the vocal kicks in. So that's the harmony. It's like a four part harmony, I guess. You got the lead, that harmony there, that one, and occasionally, uh, occasionally a five part. So definitely not his most insane. But um, yeah, the cool part is that underneath it, backing it all up, is the gospel choir. Never enough. It's never enough. I always leave wanting more. And they're not auto-tuned, so they're adding this very natural and bright kind of sound underneath the perfectly chopped robot version of Howard. Um, and they do each each harmony as well. Never enough. It's never enough. I always leave Just so cool, man. So good to have that sound on there. Here they are all together. If my Mac can get through this ordeal. They nail that more, that, that bit at the end. So that's uh, Howard and a gospel choir all together. It's just the same thing the whole way through. No real other other lyrics. It's never enough. There never will be too much you. Never enough. I always leave wanting more. I do feel like Howard's best work is usually when he keeps it really simple and it's like more of a chant, you know, like F for you. That kind of, here's the damn hook. <laughs> Sing it. Yeah. So all those vocals um, are going into the vocal bus, which you can see here. First thing they're going through is compressor. Blue Stripe 1176. Leave wanting more. Um, then a bit of EQ, just rolling off low mids, boosting some high. Leave one to more. You can hear the like <sighs> on those mores coming through, which is really nice. Then we're going into soothe. Leave one to more. That is what's destroying my Mac. I'm pretty sure about it. Leave one to more. So that's just pulling out resonances. If you don't know what soothe does, I can't explain it right now, but it's the best plugin ever made. Leave one to more. Then we're going through this uh, inflator, which, here you go. So it's adding, you know, quite a lot of volume, but it's also sort of doing a lot of widening and boosting the highs a bit. This, is, this slider here sort of chooses which frequencies it pushes around, so I've got it slightly on the bright side of things. really hear the air coming out on the vocals so i'm pushing that air up even more uh then we've got a ring shifter again but that that's not on the whole time i don't think yeah that's right i'm using that as with automation so i'm bringing that in on the on the moors like on the long yeah it happens pretty much every time like if i push that all the way it just makes like almost a flanger, you know, it's, it is doing phase shifting, basically. I really love it when, um, when Tame Impala do that, like when, when Kevin Parker like puts the whole mix through a flanger just for a second, you know, and then pulls it out. So I'm not doing it on the whole mix, but all the vocals are going through like a flanger for a bit. There's also a tune that I've played the other day that does it. Um, oh, uh, Danny California by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. There's like that fill. The drum fill it goes dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a before the guitar solo. 
and they just put the whole song for a massive flanger and it just goes just for a second. So I don't know if like Kevin was inspired by that, but I was I was blasting that tune in the day the other the, the other day in LA and I was like, yeah, that is I didn't realize that's where I got the influence for putting loads of stuff through flangers every now and again but that tune is a big one definitely i love how they did that it's such a tasty flanger yeah don't be afraid to use your effects more violently on entire buses or even the whole mix like i always have a couple of effects plugins on my master out just to mess with it like a dj set you know you can just hit record and see what happens and you get some happy accidents going sometimes valhalla uber mod is a good one too yeah i don't use that one too much then we get back to the tremolo stuff which i already showed you guys but that's doing Wanting more. All of the choppy stuff. Never enough. Never enough. It's never enough. Then we got a bit more EQ. Just taking out low mids. Oh, and this is the filter one. So this is just doing sweeps, basically. H delay and reverb. And then I'm making up some gain plugin at the end. Um, I think for some reason, the, um, the Sound Toys Tremolator adds a lot of distortion, which is cool. It's like a, an, an actual tremolo unit. You know, if you put put too much signal into a real tremolo it's going to distort so it has these meters here and, and i found that i needed to back it off a lot to keep it out of the red hair or it was just adding distortion to the vocals in a not nice way so keeping it very much in the green so yeah that, it's interesting some plugins they have no real top there is no distortion but i don't think there's a point where with the logic tremolo like you can't distort into that it just does tremolo but this one has some characteristics of like a distortion unit so always check that you're actually getting the sound that you want. That's the vocals. No sends on there. Not sending to like Logic Chorus or like any outboard reverbs or anything. It's all in this one tasty bus and all being automated here. So yeah, you got reverb buildups, H delay, feedback. There is some cool uh, feedback stuff going on actually, which I would I'd like to show you guys. Or well, I, I think mostly actually that's the beeps that are doing the coolest. <laughs> Yeah, so just bringing up the reverb with the filter, just like DJ style again, basically. Um, but yeah, a lot of work here. Again, like none of it's the same. It's all, it's basically all jammed out and just, I felt it out as we went through. Up next, the beeps. So again, my aim with this was to make it sound as like analog as possible. Well, which the beeps are, they're from a real synth. But I wanted the distortion, the H delay, like everything to sound like it's moving and it's like a jam and see if people would even notice that I'd done it with a mouse. Um, there, I used to do that all the time with the first album, especially. I was like tricking people, trying to make them think that we were had a massive analog studio, but we were just doing it all with a mouse. <laughs> to me, this sounds analog as hell. And yeah, each time is different. Each each thing is different. This is where the distortion starts to go really crazy. And you get to beeps insane. Da. So yeah, what, what I actually did, it wasn't really like behaving the way I wanted it to when I was doing the distortion because it was just so intense. Uh, f first of all, here's the beeps with no plugins. It's all Juno, so compress. Yeah, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary here. Bit of EQ, boosting the high mids. Overdrive. Blah, blah, blah. Nothing interesting. The, the interesting stuff's here. It's going through a decapitator on punish mode. And that's what's giving it that bzz, 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 over the top. But I'm using it in a tiny... No, it's not even on one. But it just immediately makes it sound analog, which it, it is, but more analog. <laughs> on top of that. Decimort doing some bit crush. Just adding more analog vibes. And then, yeah, some effects. Is there another decapitator? Yeah, that's the crazy one. So all this distortion is all done with um, decapitators on like full 
crazy. So what I did was I sent this signal to a bus and hit record. Um, yeah, I did this like insane beep. This insane beeps file is basically a bounce of that, like what you're about to hear now. The reason I did it is I couldn't get Decapitator to do the same thing every time. I think like when you're like when you're working Decapitator really hard, it sort of behaves in like a really weird way. And every time I played back the tune, it was different. I can't really explain it, but uh, it might do it now if my laptop lets me play it. Yeah, so the way I got it to do that, which was me just totally experimenting with uh, Decapitator, was I switched the style of the distortion on the drop, and it makes the whole thing go completely mad. Like, if you see... Well, yes, and then it also totally... Is that the right Decapitator? Might be this one. Yeah, that switch. I did by mistake, like on the drop, I was trying out ones with it on full and I was like, wow, the, the switch of it is making it, it sort of fades into the next setting, right? I thought it would just go like, but it goes like, and I had the, the feedback on like just over a hundred percent. So it's like self oscillating feedback and just switched the entire type of distortion on punish mode. So basically working it as hard as I possibly can. See that? I'll try it on Neve mode. See, they're all totally different. E is definitely the most aggressive. I don't know what E stands for. Um, but yeah, if you do it on the drop, you can kind of make these mental moments happen. So I did it a few times got all this automation in there, did it as best I could. But yeah, it was still just sort of slightly different every time. Yeah, and then this just builds and builds and builds and you know, you get to that peak crazy. Crazy. There you go. So yeah, just giving it maximum attack. These are just the same file, just pushed up an octave, I'm pretty sure. They just come in and back it up now and again. Loads of echo and delay and stuff. Got some some build-ups happening here as well, like reverbs and... There's a drone noise going on throughout, which is monarch and that's just doing like some frequency oscillating like bouncy stuff watch this oscillator here this is what's doing everything yeah you get the vibe just going sharp and flat sharp and flat of uh of the note so like this oscillator is doing like me the whole time and this one below it's going me, and they're sort of bouncing off each other and creating those nice thingies what else oh yeah the guitar <laughs> prince guitar so this uh i think this was connor might have been seth i don't remember now it just didn't fit the vibe Cool, but you know, it, it, once that massive bass went in, it just didn't fit. It was like, this is a hard garage tune. Like, we didn't need the. Yeah, I don't know. It was a cool little starter, got us in the key, um, but then we we decided against it. And yeah, this was this was definitely Connor. These chords here. And that is nice. Yeah, they, I mean, it all worked with the bass line and everything. Um, but once the vocals kind of started going in, me and Howard decided against them. You know, 
Um, again, just didn't think it fit the vibe, but it did set us off in the right direction with the vocals and everything. So, shouts to Connor Albert. Stab chords. What's that? Are those the little? Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, just like sawtooth wave. Yeah, got some more flangey stuff going on there with uh, RC20. I'm using the wobble effect here, but I'm using the mix knob to blend it with the non-phased sound. So you're getting like kind of a weird thing going on. You hear that every now and again? If you're in headphones, you'll definitely hear that. It's going subtle, but I really, I love that setting on RC20. What else we got? Oh yeah, this bit's really cool. So shouts to you if you've even noticed this in the tune. This is a bit of the choir sample, bit of the gospel choir put into a plugin called Quanta, which is a granular, a granulator. So you can hear bits of it coming through like never enough. Yeah, so I basically did what I'm doing right there, drag this bit around, mess with some parameters, you know, just screw around with it for a while. And I sent it to a bus and hit record. So I basically was recording myself mess around with it. Ended up with this take. And that's just sort of underneath there, just building more. It's pretty subtle, man. I think the, the time where you can hear them the most is this last drop. Go. They just add like a, they fill a space where like without, it's one of those elements of a song where when you take it away, you miss it. But when it's in, you don't even notice it. So it's, yeah, it's hard to explain if you're just sort of getting started, but yeah. For me, that's my favorite bit of the tune these days, like playing that warehouse project the other day. We like cut all the lights out just for that one second and then lasers like for the outro. Yeah, man, that's for me that that's like that's the little moments that what garage is all about, you know, and you bring it back in for a second here. That's so minor, <laughs> like it's a tiny, tiny thing. Just tiny little details like that. You know? Which you'll never hear. Yeah, there's like a little hi hat fill there, I think that sort of backs it up. That's the only time that that, that sound is in the entire song. That little thing just complements those granular vocals nicely. Gives them some high end. Bass, last thing, substantial bass. This was the Juno, definitely. Juno 106, Andy, aka Luxury, on the keys. Sounding pretty good out of the gate, but we can get it better. We got overdrive. Uh, no chorus on the Juno for this one. Left it blank. The actually, the chorus on my Juno is broken. That's why there's none. But it's bass too, so I, I wanted it just down the middle. I've got a bit of Logic chorus and Roto cabinet on the very on the on the output here, so it, it's going a bit wide. But yeah, I just didn't need it wide. Just needed it huge. <laughs> So yeah, rolling off like the super lows, like 30 hertz and down or something. A little boost on the 50, taking out some low mids and boosting like this kind of, I don't know what you call this, like, it's just like, it's the like t -t 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 at the transient, like the click at the start of each note. I just really like that on a Juno. That's one of the things you, you cannot get from the Tal one, like it just doesn't do a good pop on the start of the note. I've found that with soft synths generally, to be honest, like 
Moogs and Junos, they just have a better entry point when you press the note. You see that they look like each time? That's just you don't get that on the towel. You get a horrible digital click that's just like it doesn't have like that. I know it's a very small difference, but makes a difference to me. Distortion. So I'm running it full, but just on a tiny amount. Like if I crank it up, you'll Oh. Jesus, that's really great. So yeah, I've got that on just a tiny amount, just to give it a bit of... Then we're going through... Oh, this is really cool. Yeah, we're going through RC20, and I've got, like, the um, flux mode on the bit crusher, which is just making this weird resonancy sound, like... So here it goes. I'll turn it up a bit so you can... It's more obvious. Yeah, you can hear it going... A normal bit crusher would just do the same note each day. It would just go... Whereas this is going like getting really crazy. It's like a, it's like applying a different bit crusher to every note. You know, it's like you'd have ten bit crushers all on a different setting. But with the RC twenty, you can put it in this flux mode, which is really cool. Yeah, I, I like the I use the RC twenty in a very different way to most producers I've seen. Most producers use it to make like a lo-fi piano or like crush a sample and make it all wobbly and like lo-fi. I rarely use it to make things lo-fi. I usually use it as like sprinkles on on something um, or, a fa or a flanger. Like I use it much more as like an effects box rather than a, like a, a sample crusher. Uh, then you got some delay. I don't need to show you guys that and some reverb. And the whole thing is getting sidechained. Multiband compressed sidechain on the lows. So I'm like just ducking the sub with the kick drum and leaving all the highs because you don't you don't need to duck the highs. I quite like the harmonics coming through, you know. So it's quite nice because it means that these high notes don't get side chained because they don't need to. You know, they're not they haven't got loads of energy and sub. They're not clashing with the kick. It's only sort of a hundred hertz down that you need to duck. So I'm leaving all of these nice notes in. Yeah, so just not side-chaining the whole signal, <clears throat> just side-chaining the sub. Um, and yeah, a bit of chorus and roto cab on there. I think that's it. That's every part anyway. We got the mix bus. So what's going on with the mix bus? Got a gain knob on there that's doing absolutely nothing. Going into SSL, G bus compressor, then some tape, uh, then the drama by Softube. It's like a, another oh, multi-band compressor. If you've been watching the stream for a while, you will have seen it a million times. Saturn, adding some saturation clean tube setting i love the clean tube for just adding some top end sparkle on the way out uh then the oxford inflator um and then i i would have soothe here as well i like i put soothe on my master out just a tiny bit um with the wet and dry knob especially with a tune like this it's got such a loud rim and loads of vocals loads of synths like the mid-range is going to jump out at points so you just need something to catch those moments it's on a, it would be on a very low setting and then EQ as well. Um, I will have um, bypassed this before I, I sent it sent it to master. This would have been my like guide I was using while sort of listening to it. Like I've got that one bypassed as well. I would have copied this using my SSL fusion box. So I would have gone, all right, sit like a little dB boost on 50, take out some treble on the top or like the, the, it's got a high, um, it's got a high band compressor, the fusion. So I was basically using this as a visual guide of how I wanted to set my fusion. So I would have bypassed that. And then as you can see here, I sent the whole mix out of output three and four through my SSL desk here into the fusion and then hit record as it was playing itself. And you end up with that, which I've named SSL return. So that's the whole tune playing from start to finish, um, pre-mastered basically. And then from there, that then goes to the master out, which is here which has a remix effects on, which I definitely didn't use. And that's where I'd now put my limiter, where I'd bounce the demo through the limiter. Um, I wouldn't bounce it through a limiter before sending it to mastering. That would be dumb. So there you go. That's, uh, that's the whole mix.